Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's Studio where you learn not just the how but the why of watercolor so you move along your painting journey a lot faster. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you one of the three trees that I did for my Patreon students. I have a lot of holiday tutorials though that I've uh, built up over the years. So be sure to check out my Patreon index at rachelstudio.com slash Patreon index to see all the holiday tutorials I have plus lots of other things. And if you are interested in painting mostly soft, dreamy animals, you may enjoy my Patreon. And each tutorial that I do takes at least a week of work and they're really in depth. They're almost like courses. And someday I may offer them at a more course level price. But right now for just $8 a month, which is my basic Patreon, you get access to over a hundred tutorials, hours and hours of in-depth content. And remember, if you join for a year, you can get in-depth critiques from me and the higher tier level you join, the more critiques you can get. And I do have tiers that go all the way up to $30, which is a professional level tier. I have gotten paintings into professional, national, international level shows, and I share my more advanced techniques to that $30 tier. You can follow my highs and lows, and there are a lot of lows, and I share those too on my community tab and often in my videos. So be sure to come back and check out what I'm doing in my tutorials because I do make a point to share not just my successes, but also my failures, my experiments, because that is such a key, important part of the artistic journey. And so I would love to see what you paint, by the way, and you can share that for free on my Facebook community where you can join for free and you can share your art and you can get feedback about your art if you would like it. And you can also see other people's art and ask questions. And we really learn a lot from each other. And it's a great way to grow as an artist. I could not have gotten where I have gotten today without the art communities that I was a member of. So I'd love for you to join that Facebook group and I will link that here. And in today's tutorial though, we're gonna paint a fir tree and it's gonna be holiday themed but not too holiday themed, just so that you can do whatever you want with it. And I am gonna use something called a striper brush. This is a striper brush that I have here. I happen to have one good, but I don't want you to have to go paint kitty. He knows you wanted a kitty out there, kitty. Okay, anyway, so you don't have to, I don't want you to have to go out and buy special supplies for this tutorial. You do not need this brush. You can use any brush you have. You can use a round, you can use a flat. It doesn't matter. What is important is the paper you choose. Uh, I do suggest at least using paper that is meant for watercolor painting, even if it's a student grade paper like Hippie Crafter. That's a good one that I like. Canson makes a good one. If you really wanna take your paintings to the next level, use better paper, which would be 100% cotton cold press, or hot press paper. If you paint on cold press, it's a little easier to blend and everything looks softer. On hot press, you get more, more watery effects. It shows more of your brush strip mistakes. So it is harder in general to paint on hot press, but you can get more detail, harder edges, and your colors will look brighter on it. It's a smoother paper where the paint sits on top of it more. And I've done a lot of tutorials over the years comparing hot press to cold press. So that's yet another thing that you can learn and watch on my Patreon. In this particular tutorial, I'm gonna use Balhung cold press watercolor paper. I buy that on Amazon. Paper is important. Well, another thing that's not important is the colors you use. You can use any of the paint colors that you already have. Don't go out buying special paint colors for this tutorial. Now, if you do want to get the exact effects with the granulation and the, the look of what I have, you might want to use something more close to what I use. And in fact, I have a whole video and I will link that here about my 10 favorite paint colors that I have curated over the years, over 20 plus years of painting. I have settled on my favorite 10 paint colors. They all work beautifully together. I don't need much else to paint with. So you might enjoy that video too. So I will link that here, but you don't need my colors. What is more important is to get, get your values right. And also I think for this tree to look really dynamic like it does in this painting, use different colors as you go. So you will see me do that in this tutorial, but let's go ahead and get started with this fir tree. All right, so what you see me doing first is I paint a watery line straight down because your tree tip and your trunk usually are gonna line up pretty well. So that's a good thing to do just with clear water to help you remember to line your tree up so it's not crooked and uh, the tip is nice and, and over the trunk. Usually that's 
how you paint a tree. And I start out with a mix of Windsor Green Gold and I'm putting a little bit of French Ultramarine in there. And this is almost cream consistency, but it's still wa uh, watery enough, milky enough to get these swishy brush strokes. And every stroke or so, what you're going to see me do is change the color in my brush. And the name of the game is to make some uh, brush strokes not only different in color, but in value. And so sometimes I mush this brush and sometimes I lift it up as I move through the stroke to a light touch and then I disconnect it for some of the tips and then you'll see me flick it. So I'm just playing with all different kinds of brush strokes and this is a great way to get to know this brush. This is one of the first times I've ever painted with this brush. So I'm just kind of feeling it out and seeing what I can do with it and using different pressures and the side of it and the tip of it and uh, I really liked the feel of it. So again, that last brush stroke had more permanent green light. And then I found it made a really cool flick effect, which I think really adds some energy to this painting and gives it a really organic feel. So I like that. I was trying to flick it some more here and it didn't flick. You have to have just the right amount of paint in your brush. And here I go in with almost tea consistency. I'm trying to get a really light color. One of my challenges with Christmas trees and trees like that is I get them all a medium value. You really don't want that. You want lights, mediums, and darks in obvious changes in value, not just color, but value. So uh, later you'll see me do some lifting and painting with lighter. Um, I think I blot actually to get lighter areas because I, even though I added a lot of water to my brush, it still came out pretty pigmented. There I have a little bit of ultramarine added. That's really deep and rich. And as you go down the tree, in general, you're going to get in more shadow. So I kind of imagine a tree would have more dark shadows in the bottom. So that's how I painted this with more pure French ultramarine towards the bottom. And I just work from the same puddle and just continue to add different colors to my puddle and different amounts of water to my puddle to get different brush strokes in, the, in their color and also in their value. There I'm splatting on some water to see if I can get a little bit of cauliflower texture. And here I'm going in with almost completely clean, clear water to attach my tree into the painting. You really wanna do that. And here I add some pure cobalt blue. I'm imagining snow. But that's the thing, you don't want this tree to look like a cutout. So to make it look like it's ingrained into the painting, attach it here at the bottom with almost clean, clear water for a disappearing edge at the bottom. And then just fidgeting about and playing and adding a little bit of um, dynamic little swishy strokes just to play. Here I'm lifting some paint to get lighter values. I can see that it's all kind of a medium value, such a beginner move. I look back at some of my older Christmas trees, they're all medium value throughout the tree. You don't want that. You want lighter areas to make it look airy and watercolory and dreamy. So while this is still wet, you can't do it when it's dry. You gotta do it when it's wet and not super wet, but half wet, buckling. You go in with a thirsty brush by cleaning out your brush wringing it out so it's damp and clean and then you can lift out some color and I suggest just doing it in a few areas and look how much dreamier that looks it looks like light is coming through it now and that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor is that transparent look you just can't get that with any other medium but you have to get your lights in to get that effect just splattering some energy on there. This is some tree energy. Maybe it's some early wintry flurries energy. I don't know, but I just feel like it adds a beautiful forest energy to the piece to have some little flicks of paint. There is my permanent green light. 
pretty pure milk consistency. I'm splatting that on now. You could also splat on white ink or white gouache with a little water added to it or white watercolor paint. You could put a cardinal in your tree. You could put a star. Here I'm putting a very fine little delicate, um, almost whisper thin topper on it. And that really gives it some nice energy. All right, I'm just adding a little bit more clear water down at the bottom to attach the tree into my painting. And notice how with windmill principle edges, that gives us some light on light edges. There's some light boughs in the tree against the light background. So at least we have two of the windmill principle edges. So I hope you'll subscribe. So I hope you'll sub sub <laughs> no, sub sub subscribe. <laughs> I hope you'll subscribe. I feel like this is the part where the king comes in and pulls me off stage because, and I will see you next time. Now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.